Let's read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Page 153. The Proclamation of the Kingdom of God. Everyone is called to enter the kingdom. First announced to the children of Israel, this messianic kingdom is intended to accept men of all nations. To enter it, one must first accept Jesus' word. The word of the Lord is compared to a seed which is sown in a field. Those who hear it with faith and are numbered among the little flock of Christ have truly received the kingdom. Then by its own power, the seed sprout and grows until the harvest. The kingdom belongs to the poor and lowly, which means those who have accepted it with humble hearts. Jesus is sent to preach good news to the poor. He declares them blessed. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To them, the little ones, the Father is pleased to reveal what remains hidden from the wise and the learned. Jesus shares the life of the poor from the cradle to the cross. He experiences hunger, thirst, and privation. Jesus identifies himself with the poor of every kind and makes active love toward them the condition for entering his kingdom. Jesus invites sinners to the table of the kingdom. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. He invites them to that conversation, conversion without which one cannot enter the kingdom, but shows them in word and deed his Father's boundless mercy for them and the vast joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. The supreme proof of his love will be the sacrifice of his own life for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' invitation to enter his kingdom comes in the form of parables, a characteristic feature of his teaching. Teaching Through his parables, he invites people to the feast of the kingdom, but he also asks for a radical choice to gain the kingdom. One must give everything. Words are not enough. Deeds are required. The parables are like mirrors for man. Will he be hard soil or good earth for the word? What use has he made of the talents he has received? Jesus and the presence of the kingdom in this world are secretly at the heart of the parables. One must enter the kingdom that is become a disciple of Christ in order to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. For those who stay outside, everything remains enigmatic. Jesus accompanies his words with many mighty works and wonders and signs which manifest that the kingdom is present in him and attests that he was the promised Messiah. The signs worked by Jesus attest that the Father has sent him. They invite belief in him. To those who turn to him in faith, he grants what they ask. So miracles strengthen faith in the one who does his Father's works. They bear witness that he is the Son of God, but his miracles can also be occasions for offense. They are not intended to satisfy people's curiosity or desire for magic, despite his evident miracles, some people reject Jesus. He is even accused of acting by the power of demons. By freeing some individuals from the earthly evils of hunger, injustice, illness, and death, Jesus performed messianic signs. Nevertheless, he did not come to abolish all evils here below, but to free men from the grave of slavery sin which thwarts them in their vocation as God's sons and causes all forms of human bondage. The coming of God's kingdom means the defeat of Satan's. If it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus' exorcism free some individuals from the domination of demons. They anticipate Jesus' great victory over the ruler of this world. The kingdom of God will be definitely established through Christ's cross. God reigned from the wood. From the beginning of his public life, Jesus chose certain men, twelve in number, to be with him and to participate in his mission. He gives the twelves a share in his authority and sent them out to preach the kingdom of God to, and to heal. They remain associated forever with Christ's kingdom, for through them he directs the church. As my Father appointed a kingdom for me, so do I appoint for you that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon Peter holds the first place in the College of the Twelve. Jesus entrusted a unique mission to him. Through a revelation from the Father, Peter had confessed, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our Lord then declared to him, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. 
Christ the living stone thus assures his church built on Peter of victory over the powers of death. Because of the faith he confessed, Peter will remain the unshakable rock of the church. His mission will be to keep this faith from every lapse and to strengthen his brothers in it. Jesus entrusted a specific authority to Peter. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The power of the keys designates authority to govern the house of God, which is the church. Jesus, the good shepherd, confirmed this mandate after his resurrection. Feed my sheep. The power to bind and loose con connotes the authority to absolve sins, to pronounce doctrinal judgments, and to make disciplinary decisions in the church. Jesus entrusted this authority to the church through the ministry of the apostles, and in particular through the ministry of Peter, the only one to whom he specifically entrusted the keys of the kingdom. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and I love you.